Hey guys, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you. Guys, in this one we are going to be looking at some more games from our climb during Day 1 of Season 5. It is actually still currently Day 1 of Season 5, or about 10 hours into the season at the time of recording this. And my current rank is actually, I can show you guys, um, I'm actually at Platinum 2, but I've actually just fallen from Platinum 1, which hasn't happened, you know, since Season 1. Um, it's a shame, too, if they hadn't added the, du the diamond ranks, I actually would have floored my platinum. Well, I guess I technically still floored my platinum one record, uh, hitting platinum one at nine hours after the season dropped. But, yeah, had they not added diamond, that means, I'm, you know, I wouldn't have dropped from plat. But, um, as it stands now, we are still able to drop between ranks within platinum, and since there's now diamond above platinum, uh, you can in fact now drop again from plat 1 to plat 2. So, not a big deal though, I will be taking, you know, a small break as is, uh, I like to give this advice, and it seems kind of counterintuitive sometimes, but you definitely should take breaks uh, between play sessions. Even if it's like one long play session, you shouldn't play for like 12 hours straight. You should definitely take, you know, extended breaks between them. So I'm about to take my second extended break of the evening, probably for at least an hour or so. Um, but yeah, I got some games from Platinum to show you. Um, I climb up through Platinum. I got a lot of pretty good ones, actually. Um, the format it still seems to be mostly like... Drytron, Mirror Matches, and then, like, Rogue Decks. Um, I've encountered one actual Diamond player so far. Uh, the same person twice, actually, and funnily enough, they were just playing, like, a stun deck. But uh, that's the only Diamond player that I've been matched against so far. Anyway, let's go ahead and go over the list here, and then we'll take a look at some of those games. Alright, so we've got three Tri Brigade Nerval, three Maxi, two Tri Brigade Chaos, three Tri Brigade Kit, Three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, one Zodiac Whiptail, one Zodiac Thoroughblade, one Zodiac Ram Ram, three Tri Brigade Fractal, two Nibiru the Primal Being, one Harpy's Feather Duster, three Pot of Desires, one Lightning Storm, three Tenki, two Call by the Grave, three Forbidden Droplet, two Infinite Permanence, and three Tri Brigade Revolt. Down here in the extra deck, we've got a Zodiac Tiger Mortar, we've got a Dryden, a Borbo, and a Chakanane. And then we've got Zodiac, or Zodiac, Jesus, a Divine Arsenal, Azus, Sky Thunder. For links, we've got Almirage, uh, Double Dragon Lords, Ferrajit, Bearbrum, Race Vulgar, uh, Rugal, Appalusia, Axis Code, and the two Shureg. So, like the last video, this is going to be a highlight of, you know, I'll be showing replays of games from my climb. I did not stream these games, so I don't have a VOD for you to watch these games live. And I think I might have accidentally kind of meant to imply, or didn't accidentally imply, I didn't mean to imply this, but I think I might have accidentally kind of implied in the last video that, um, that I would be, you know, doing this kind of the same, or that way, blah, blah, blah. I need to start over with that sentence. <laughs> um, I kind of accidentally implied in the last video that I'll be only streaming live games from now on and only showing replays on YouTube. Not the case. There will still be live games shown on YouTube. Um, it's just for the start of the season here that I streamed a little bit at the beginning of the season. Uh, a little bit. Five hours. <laughs> and then um, from there on now, during my climb up to Diamond, Diamond 1, uh, I'm only doing uh, replays for the time being. There will still be live duels um, soon enough here on the channel. Don't worry, those are not gone for good. I didn't mean to accidentally imply that they were, so... Um, yeah, so if you're ready to see some more uh, highly competitive games here right from the start of the season, this is actually one of my favorite times of the season because you have your most cutthroat games at higher ranks during this early part of the season, especially this day one. So, um, yeah, I really, really like this part of the season. But, alright, let's go ahead and look at some of these replays here. Okay, so this first game here is going to be against uh, Pure Tri Brigade. Not quite the mirror match. I almost said the mirror match, but not quite. So uh, we get the first turn here. This hand is, it's all right. You know, we at least have Fractal and their Tri type. The rest of the hand is a little bit awkward. Uh, the Zodiac Whiptail and Double Drop with there, but definitely something we can still work with. A bit harder to work with if our opponent ends up having pretty much any form of disruption. They do end up having Max C here. Um, but that actually ends up being totally fine. Well, not totally fine. Uh, they are going to get a couple of draws, but I'm still going to special Bear Brum, obviously, because I already activated the Fractals effect. And I am still going to go into Revolt here. Even though normally I don't like playing at all into Max C, in this case, we really would need the Revolt, you know, to actually like have a follow up during our opponent's turn. 
And if it's just one extra draw, that's fine with me. Again, still more than I would ideally like them to have, but uh, still ultimately fine with me. So uh, they're going to tank you for Thoroughblade and then activate Thoroughblade, pitch to Ram Ram here. Uh, I think they're going for some kind of... Actually, I don't remember if they're going for like a combo here. Uh, but I'm actually going to do the uh, Rugal and then Revolt. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this Chalkinane. Whether they're going for like a Zeus play or a combo play with the Thoroughblade and Ram Ram. Uh, either way, I'm just going to go ahead and just put an end to it right here. Uh, by banishing the Chalkinane. Uh, my opponent's already normal summoned, so... In order to keep going, they would have to have Keros plus another Tri-Type, which, to be fair, they, they do have a lot of cards in hand, so that's definitely not, you know, impossible or improbable, even, I would say. And we're going to Chain Block, as always, you know, Nerval and then Shurig and then Kit. Just generally the best way to do it, to ensure that none of your important effects get negated. And our opponent does end up having the Keros and Tri-Type like I predicted they would, but, you know, again, that's ultimately not that big of a deal. We do still have the Droplet face down, so we still have Disruption during this turn here. And it's actually pretty nice because we get to go ahead and, you know, hit a whole bunch of cards out of their grave, um, which is going to hinder their future plays. I don't know that they even should have banished four here. They probably should have only banished two or three, I guess, depending on what the rest of their hand looks like. Uh, if they have another tri Brigade Monster in hand, they definitely should only banish two and try to go for Ferajit, but... I don't know, it's just, banishing four straight up is v actually rarely the, the correct play. Um, which might seem a bit counterintuitive, but it's typically better to banish three and then go into a Link Four than just banish four and go straight into Shuring. I find, in any way. Um, that's just my opinion there, but... Speaking of Link Fours, we're gonna go ahead and go straight into Access Code here. Um, to try to go ahead and close the game. Our opponent's going to respond with the double called by, which is actually really, really annoying, uh, to be quite honest, because it's pretty much exactly what they had to have here, as they're going to end up banishing both of our Link monsters so that we can't use access code uh, to pop the um, Keros in an attack for game. Our opponent's going to end up being left at 900, which, like I said, is pretty annoying, but hopefully won't be that big of a deal. Uh, they are going to go ahead and get the tanky for a Thoroughblade here, so they're going to have some amount of plays. Now, we do have Nibiru in hand, so even if things get, you know, too crazy, which looks like they're about to as our opponent's going to try to Zeus us, we are still going to have the option to Nibiru them, so that's always nice to be able to have that. And sure enough, yep, our opponent is going through the motions here, and in fact, we have Thoroughblade to summon one, right, and then Borbo to... Um, Tiger Mortar 3, they already used Chalkinane, so Dryden is 4, and then Zeus is summon number 5, so that'll work out pretty nicely for us here. I'm going to Nibiru, they're going to respond with Zeus, which is actually totally fine, because it's still going to end up being uh, pretty much, you know, the same result here anyway. I'm going to Nibiru, get rid of their Zeus, and their token's going to have less attack points, but it still would have the same amount of defense points, so uh, we can even use the uh, Shurig to add Chaos here. Uh, opponent does actually have more plays here. They have another Keros to summon, so uh, that is a little bit scary, like a little bit intimidating, but we still have 6,200 life points, so uh, yeah, they are going to get to summon the Shurig uh, and banish our Nibiru, um, but that's totally fine. They're also in main phase too, so like, we're not even going to take any more damage now I think about it. Um, they're going to go ahead and summon the Ferajit here. Uh, link into Ferajit, getting the Shurig search and then Ferajit summon for a Fractal, uh, then banishing the Fractal for Bear Brum, linking away, it looks like, into Appalooza for the Revolt setup. So, uh, again, that, that is actually a bit intimidating, but fortunately, we have the Whiptail in our hand, so we actually don't really have anything to worry about here, because uh, we're going to be able to summon Whiptail, go into Borgo, and attack directly. Um, but that is actually going to be a problem for us if our opponent does end up getting Revolt. However, uh, because they randomly ended up banishing our Bear Room with one of their called buys, they actually don't get the Bear Room search for the Revolt. So <laughs> it's kind of funny how what goes around kind of comes back around with that. So yeah, we can just go ahead and summon the Whiptail, go into the Borbo, and then secure the victory. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next duel here. All right, so this game is going to be against Drytron. 
Yeah, like I said, I really love this part of the season, this early part, super early part, because we get to showcase a bunch of really cool games against other tier decks. And I know people like seeing, you know, the matchups against other tier decks when it comes to, like, Trizu, because if you're playing Trizu, you know, you're, you're a competitive player, odds are, I mean... <laughs> I don't think there's anyone who's exclusively playing Trizu because they find it fun. I mean, I do find the deck really fun, don't get me wrong, but I, I won't lie. The reason I started playing it and a lot of the reason I continue to play it is because I consider it the top tier one deck. So, we do have a Max C here that's going to resolve. That is always very nice against Drytrons uh, because it's usually enough to get them to stop. Even if they don't, we do have the Droplet in hand as well. Uh, opponent is going to keep going here. They're going to Diviner and send the Eva to search for an Orange Herald. Actually pretty smart on their part. Uh, since they know they can't keep going under Max C, uh, they get to not only add the Orange Herald, but then by increasing the level by two, they get to sync for the Herald of the Arc Light here. So, multiple avenues to go ahead and try to stop me, which, again, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Uh, we're going to have to go ahead and normal summon Thoroughblade, and then overlay, and then battle before we can do anything else. Can't Droplet to negate the Herald, because Droplet requires sending cards to the graveyard as its cost, and, of course, while Herald is up, we can only banish cards. Well, from the hand or any, and main deck anyway. But yep, not only did we serve to battle over their Herald, which now allows us to go into more plays, but of course, as we all know, by battling with an Xyz monster, we are now able to go into everybody's favorite divine arsenal. <laughs> of course, I'm speaking of Zeus here. But it's just, it's more than just that. Uh, we get to actually continue with our plays, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to activate Fractal. That's going to actually bait out this Herald of the Orange Light, which is good. That's definitely what I wanted here. Uh, but I was, what I wasn't expecting was for my opponent to have another Eva. So they're going to get another two searches, including another Orange Herald. So uh, I'm going to want to continue to bait out these Orange Heralds. Uh, my opponent actually lets this Keros stick, which is pretty nice for me. Um, but I want to bait out these Orange Heralds so that... You know, of course, my Zeus will be able to actually pose some sort of threat during my opponent's turn. Alright, here we're going to go into Rugal, and I'm actually going to try to go into an Appalusia, if I recall correctly here. Uh, this Fairy Jeet draw is really, really good, getting the Ash instead of the uh, Feather Duster there. We do successfully bait out another Orange Herald, however, I do know that they have another one in their hand. So, we do still have to be concerned about that. But at the very least now, we can be assured that our Zeus won't get like double negated here. And that it will be able to clear at least some out of the board when we activate the effect. Always nice to have that. Opponent's going to activate Cyber Emergency. I'm going to go ahead and negate with Ash Blossom here. Uh, you might be wondering like, oh, won't they just be able to add it back? Because I actually thought this until pretty recently too. But uh, no, Cyber Emergency, if you read, only responds or only can, you know, get the discard to add back effect if its activation is negated. And Ash does not negate the activation of a card, it negates the effect on the, uh, you know, resolution of the activation, so... Uh, they are not able to recycle their Cyber Emergency. Opponent is still going to get a lot of searches, this looks kind of scary, but... Uh, we're still fairly in control of the situation, we do still have a Droplet face down as well. So between the Droplet and the Zeus's here, I'm actually not super duper concerned, and we also drew the beer here, which, which I won't, you know, lie, definitely helps. Uh, so as soon as my opponent moved to battle phase, I realized what they were doing. They were just battling so that they can go into Zeus, uh, which I'm actually totally fine with because I have my droplet here. So I can negate the Zeus and also ensure that they won't be able to uh, use it again on the same chain link. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and send my Whiptail here with the, the Zeus. Um, because, you know, I've already gone into a Zeus. I don't really need more Zodiac cards at this point. And, of course, I want to... Oops, sorry, I bumped the mic uh, wire there. And, of course, I want to be able to send a monster. So that way I can, um, you know, ensure that they can't respond with Zeus. And now during the end phase, the or during the end of the turn, rather, the Fractal is going to get bounced back to my hand. I can then respond with Zeus. I did flip from auto to on in order to be able to do that. So if you're in a similar scenario, make sure that you do that. But I was still able to Zeus during the end of the turn before their Zeus was able to then use its effects. So I get to clear their Zeus off the board while still keeping mine in play. So I mean, now we find ourselves 
more or less in the same scenario we were in the last turn, right? Um, yeah, where we just have to deal with one Orange Herald, but we're able to go ahead and summon Race Vulgar. We'll just switch suits to attack mode. Our opponent realizes we can just attack for lethal at that point, and thus we have secured the victory. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next replay here. Okay, this next game that we're going to be taking a look at here is going to be against Eldritch, actually. Okay, we have a pretty solid opening hand here, except for the double tanky. Slightly, you know, not op or inoptimal, but not that big of a deal. We can go ahead and just put tanky back with our um, bear run when we search the revolt there. Starting with the usual fractal line, you know, sending the um, kit nerval. Banishing with the fractal that we search, just some of the bear brum, you know, revolt, or it's for the rugal to, you know, search the revolt. We all know the line pretty well by this point, so uh, I would even call this, like, I don't know if this is an ideal opening hand. I mean, obviously, it would be better to have, like, Appalusia and Double Dragon Lord, but, you know, a setup revolt plus Imperm plus Maxi and Ash is good against, I was gonna say, any hand, but. You know, against Eldritch when they just set five back row, it is still a little bit awkward here. Definitely going to want to uh, revolt during the end of the main phase, not the end phase here, because we also want to activate our Rugal's effect. Uh, I am going to banish the first back row my opponent set, which is this one here. That's typically the first one I like to target when they are my opponent just sets a whole bunch of back row, since it's random anyway. And I find that subconsciously people tend to set their most important back rows first, and we are going to find that is the case here as the back row that we banished was actually Rivalry of the Warlords, um, which, you know, hurts Trizu very, very much, and in this particular game, actually would have stopped us from winning, well, maybe not altogether, but as quickly as we did, at least, so. Our opponent is going to Lava Golem us, a little bit annoying, but not too, too bad. Uh, I'm going to activate the Fractal and do another cycle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab another Fractal at the end of it, and I specifically actually want to grab a Fractal here, um, because it's fire, and I think my goes in, or my goes in, my opponent may have a goes in match potentially. So I want to summon fires if possible. That's also why I banish Shu here and I attempt to summon Bear Brum. Opponent actually has Skill Drain as their floodgate, which is annoying, but not the end of the world for sure. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use Chaos here, uh, even though we can't, you know, use the on field effect. We'll still special and get more damage in. Um, because by attacking with all three of these monsters, we actually put our opponent down to only 800 life points. We'll set the Revolt and Pass. Our opponent's going to try to Scarlet Sanguine. I'm going to Ash here as opposed to Maxi, because if my opponent can't get an Eldritch onto the board, then they can't really deal with my board at all. And also, furthermore, it'll be a lot easier for me to then, you know, attack them for a game during my next turn. Um, they're going to go ahead and activate the effect to set the Conquistador. I don't really care about that. That's actually totally fine with me. They have another back row, and then they end up conceding as they realize that they are not able to win. So, yeah, even when you're faced with, like, a whole bunch of back row and multiple floodgates, it's still, you know, I mean, we did go first, granted, but, uh, you know, it wasn't as scary as it might have seemed, so we were still able to pull out with the win pretty easily there. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next game. Okay, this game is going to be against Drytron again. <laughs> this opponent's name was actually Donald Rump, which uh, I'm ashamed to admit actually did get a laugh out of me, as, as immature as that is, <laughs> the first time I saw it. And I actually played against uh, good old Rump here <laughs> a couple of times. Um, it's funny, when you, uh, you, you know, when you're relatively high up on the ladder um, early on in the season, then you kind of tend to run into the same people multiple times. Um, because there's fewer people to match make with, so... Uh, yeah, I actually ended up facing off against Donald Rump twice. I think I won both times, if I recall correctly. Well, anyway, we opened the, um... we open here? Jeez, sorry, I wasn't even paying attention as well as I should have. Uh, oh, that's right, we tried to Fractal uh, and do that line. Oh, that's right, this game! We actually messed up here. You might be wondering why we went into Dryden's. Uh, it's actually because we screwed up. Um, and I accidentally misclicked. I right clicked the Nerval uh, effect. So I actually didn't get to activate the Nerval's effect. Um, so in that case, you know, I <laughs> I couldn't get a, uh, a proper setup there. So, um, you know, in, in a lot of cases, that might be, you know, a huge temptation just auto concede. I almost felt like doing it because I'm like, I can't believe I messed up that badly. 
But what I'm actually able to do here is I'm going to respond to the Drytron Nova by popping my own Tenki with Dryden. That'll set up the fourth Tri-type engrave for the Revolt, which I can then get uh, the Shurig and banish the Aldehyba here. Aldehyba really important to banish here and just prevent my opponent from accessing, as we're going to do by negating the Cyber Emergency with Ash. Because if we can stop them from accessing Aldehyba, then they can't get a Ritual Spell. And if they can't get a Ritual Spell, then they can't do anything. And as you can see, my opponent just actually conceded there. So, uh, that's why I actually kept this game, because I wanted to show. I like to show examples where I misplay, especially like that, where I misplay really badly. Um, and it's, again, you know, I was really tempted to auto-concede. And a lot of people would have just auto like snap-conceded there after messing up like that. But, um, you know, as always, it's important to you know, maintain a level head and think to ourselves, how are we going to win this game given the current circumstances? Even if the current circumstances are, you know, the result of you misplaying. Um, by keeping that level head, we were able to pull through and win this game. So that's, I like to show games like that to, you know, kind of provide an example of why it's important uh, to, you know, like I said, keep a level head and all that fun stuff. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, our next opponent is going to be yet another Drytron player. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, I figured we'd be seeing a lot of Drytron on the ladder tonight. Um, going second, this this hand looks like. Uh, yeah, I figured we'd be seeing a lot of Drytron. Uh, not only because it's early on in the season and you just tend to see a lot of Drytron uh, early on. But in addition to that, you know, with... Ben 10 going to one, you know, all of the Drytron players are like, okay, I'm going to ladder with Drytron now while I still can, you know, get another climb out of it. So, um, that's definitely, you know, another reason that, uh, you'll be seeing a lot of Drytron here. So, fortunately, we opened both Ash and C, so we were able to put a stop to a lot of what our opponent was trying to do there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the Fractal here. I've got the Called By, as well as a whole bunch of backup plays in hand, so... Not particularly concerned. Whoops, with the disruption. I, sorry, I bumped the cord there again. Pona does have the droplet here in order to negate our fractal, which is fairly annoying. But at this point, they're only left with one card in hand, two once they draw for turn. And we've got a called by and an ash. Between the two of those, I'm confident we can stop pretty much anything our opponent can do. So uh, even though I didn't get to do really any plays, I'm not super concerned here. Uh, sure enough, my opponent's going to normal summon the Diviner. I get to negate it with the Ash Blossom. And then if my opponent tries to Alpha Thuban from the graveyard, I can just go ahead and called by that. And sure enough, they tribute the Natasha, their last card in hand, in order to do so. Um, but now I am able to completely run them down out of resources. They can't do anything else here. I still have my Fractal on board, as well as the Nerval and Thoroughblade in hand. So. Um, yep, yeah, by using our hand traps wisely, we were able to pretty efficiently just grind the Drytron player out of options in a matter of no time there. Alright, let's go ahead and look at the next game. Okay, this game is going to be a mirror match, actually. We are both playing Trizu. Uh, their build is a little bit different from mine. I was just looking at it. They are playing Gammas, uh, as well as, of course, Driver in addition. is going to be the main difference between our builds here. Um, like I've always said, though, I'm not a particularly huge fan of Gamma in this deck. Uh, it just feels bad to have to try to make room for Cyframe Driver, you know? That's kind of the main reason why I don't play Gammas, honestly. Um, we got a fairly solid opening start here. Uh, looks like we are doing... what do we do here? Ah, uh, yes, we opened Desires and activated Tenki, just, you know, trying to bait out the Ash a couple of times. Uh, doing the typical Fractal line here. Um, it might have been better to try to special the Keros in case they had a hand trap, but we can still just go ahead and send the kit uh, for Almirage, even though we don't get the effects because we already used the kit. That'll set up four Tri-types in Grave for the Revolt here. And as soon as they normal summon their Nerval, I'm going to go ahead and Revolt, but they're playing Crossout Designator. I'm going to go ahead and chain Max C in response to this so that I can get special summons, or, or I can get draws off their special summons when they, you know, go into the Almirage with the Nerval here, so Crossout Designator definitely not a bad option, that's another one of the main differences between uh, our builds here. A uh, Crossout Designator definitely not a bad option in this deck, I don't personally feel the need to run it, especially this particular meta, which I suspect it will be more Drytron heavy, and Crossout Designator I don't particularly want against Drytron, or need it I don't think as the Trizu, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and 
droplet here, and then that's going to be enough to get the old concede from our opponent as they're not able to go into any more plays after banishing all of their tri-types from grave and then having their effect negated. All right, on to the next and I think probably last game of this video. All right, this is, yeah, I think it'll be the last game of this video here. This is going to be another game against the mirror match. And it's actually going to be a pretty, you know, solid back and forth here. Opponent's going to take the first turn. We have a phenomenal turn two hand. This is like probably one of the best turn two hands you could actually get. In fact, I'm trying to think. If I was going to sculpt my hand and I knew I was going second, it might actually just be these five cards, right? The Ash, Sea, Droplet, Imperm, and Fractal. So uh, we get to Ash our opponent's Fractal, and then we will Imperm their Rescue Cat so that they're not able to go off really at all there. I'm going to activate my own Fractal now. Go ahead and do the Fractal Cycle, uh, send a Kit, Nerval, and then Wheeling back to the Fractal. I will then normal summon the Fractal and try to activate for Ferrajit and go for Chaos, but my opponent does have a Droplet here, which is unfortunate, but at the very least I can still battle over this Rescue Cat. Uh, opponent was also able to send Nerval with a Droplet, so they're going to get a little bit of a, a boost to their consistency here as they search for their own Fractal for the next turn. A little bit annoying, but I do still have C and Droplet, so I feel pretty much mostly fine here with what's going on. I don't feel super duper threatened anyway. Sure enough, opponent is going to Fractal. I'm going to allow this because, you know, obviously my responses C and Droplet aren't really warranted here. Opponent's going to wheel back into another Fractal, not too surprising. Uh, they're going to normal summon the Fractal, and they actually end up banishing four here, which I don't think is correct. I think they should have only banished three, or maybe even two, depending on what's in their hand. I mentioned this, I think, earlier in this video, or the last video, one of the two. I think it was earlier in this one, but um, I think there are not as many situations. I, I think it's relatively rare to actually want to banish four and go directly into Shurig with a Tri-Brigade monster. I think it's typically correct to banish two or three and Link climb up to the Link four instead. Typically, but not all the time. Okay, so my opponent does have a Revolt here. That's going to be annoying. I figured going into this play that Revolt was going to be the one back row they could have. That would really stop me, and sure enough, they do have it. So we at the very least have a maxi, so we can get some draws here. And if I can draw into a Tri-Type monster, um, then with this Chaos, I can actually still keep going into plays, even though my opponent is revolting me here. <laughs> I mean, they're activating Revolt. I don't, I don't mean that they're disgusting me. You know what I mean. <laughs> So, sure enough, they're able to get all of their, you know, effects off, which is fairly annoying. We can, at the very least, cut off their searching here by using Called By on the Nerval. And it's not like we're going to Nerval, you know, during the rest of this turn or during our opponent's turn. So, no harm in Called Bying it here. And, yep, opponent is going to banish the Shurig. I'll go ahead and throw Imperm down in the middle column. I always like to throw it in the middle column because some people default spells and traps to that column. Um, sure enough, my opponent's going to activate Fractal here again. I'll go ahead and Imperm it, um, and just hope that they don't have any more plays to go for more damage. And I actually get a little bit lucky here, and they actually don't have any more plays, so I am going to be able to survive through this turn. I actually thought I was going to lose. I was pretty sure I was going to lose at this point, until this play. Until this play right here, when they go into the Ferrajit. Uh, because I have the Ash in hand, now when they go for the Shurig Search, I'm just going to go ahead and Ash it. And hopefully just leave my opponent with a Fairy Jeet, uh, as opposed to Fractal plus Shurig, a severe downgrade from their last board. And sure enough, they d actually don't have any other plays, so yeah, they're ending on just a Fairy Jeet. Uh, we also drew the Desires here, however, uh, my deck is down to 12 cards, so I can't realistically really hope to use this Desires. Um, opponent's gonna max C. So I'm not going to go ahead and summon any more after this Racevulgar. And it actually, I think Racevulgar is going to end up being the safest play to stay into anyway. Um, because, you know, it's a quick effect. So during my opponent's next turn, I can go ahead and put back another Tri-Type in their grave. And then I can just go ahead and keep putting back Tri-Types. But my opponent actually doesn't end up having a play anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. But now here my opponent is kind of infuriatingly at 53-50. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Feather Duster here. And my opponent is going to, of course, respond with the Droplet on the Keras for some reason, but that's totally fine. 
Uh, I debated a long for a while here whether or not I wanted to go into access code, but I ultimately do end up going into the access code to get the damage in, um, because it's really not hard at all to do 50 points of damage, especially because, and I believe I do still have, uh, yeah, the boar bow in the extra deck, so 50 damage not that hard to do. Thought about keeping Raceful Go around for more uh, disruption of my opponent's graveyard of the tri-types in their grave during their turn, but ultimately decided it probably wasn't going to be needed because I think they only had one or two, I think only one tri-brigade monster left, or tri-type left in grave anyway, but that is going to be enough for us to secure the victory. So, all right, let's go ahead and take one last look at the deck here as we do the outro as always. Okay, everybody, want to thank you as always for watching. Um, yeah, so... The early bit of this season, the next few days here, or rather, I mean, you know, these past couple of days have been Trizu, and it's probably going to be one or two, probably two more days of Trizu. I know a lot of you like Trizu, so that's probably not an issue for the vast majority of my viewers here, but uh, I'm definitely going to keep powering through the ladder with Tri Brigade Zodiac here, uh, as I hope to climb Diamond 1 as quickly as possible. Um, should be able to do it before the ban list changes. I should have plenty of time to do that. I don't expect it will take me too, too long to get up there. But, um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and keep rocking out these uh, diamond, or this diamond, this, uh, this climb to diamond one uh, with Trevor Games Zodiac. Maybe when we get to diamond, um, we'll might try switching to a different deck, maybe, but it's still probably going to be mostly, if not all, Trevor Games Zodiac. So. Uh, once that is done, we will go ahead and start doing some updated deck profiles for the new ban list. And from there, we will get to see a greater variety of decks as I showcase all of my new lists for the new ban list. So look forward to that in the near future. Um, in the meantime, though, like I said, thank you very much for watching, especially all the way to the end of the video like this. That is super duper awesome. I am especially appreciative if you're commenting and subscribing. Subscribing, of course, being the best way to get notifications for when my videos uh, drop. And I just love seeing your guys' comments. I have an excellent comment section uh, that is always giving really, really good advice about the games that I show. So I love to see you guys' comments as well. Uh, if you would like further notifications for when I stream on Twitch, you can go ahead and check out my description. There are links to both my Twitter and my Twitch. I tweet out always an hour before I go live, so if you want advanced notifications, you definitely gonna want to check out Twitter there. Um, but, you know, again, I don't want to pressure you into any of doing, in, you into doing any of that, rather. Don't feel like you have to. Really, again, is if you're watching all the way to the end like this, that is already far more than enough. But, uh, as always, I tell I'm feeling myself talking in circles here at the end, so let me just go ahead and end the video. Without further ado, this is Xlex signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.